You are listening to an MLGA Network podcast. Cam, I don't want to do a cold open before the show. Why not? Why not? <laughs> don't don't do that. Don't do that. Seriously, what what's your issue today? Are you four? Listen, I was going to the store, and I stopped, you know, in in the little crosswalk to let these people cross the road, and they didn't do a courtesy wave, and it's just thrown off my entire day yeah well you know people suck um if it makes you feel any better i had a weird day too really what (laughs) happened to you a guy came into my shop today and looked at me in the eyes and said he said are you the manager here i said yes sir and he said um i'm looking to make a costume i said okay i mean we we have a lot of materials for that and he he looked me in the eyes and he said do you think i'd look good in a catwoman suit Oh, where the f*** do you work? I don't want to talk about work stuff. Welcome to Make Liberty Great Again, the best damn liberty podcast that you've never heard of. Phil and I will be your guides as we peer into the ridiculous reality of our society and our government. Let's get to it. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Make Liberty Great Again, Ron Paul's Playhouse. I'm your host, Cam Harless, and joining me today is my co-host, Phil Padilla. My mind and my body are ready, particularly my body. Oh, I'd rather not hear that. Don't lie, just let it happen. <laughs> let's let's just get started. All right, if you say so. Well, uh, all right, so big news like everyone's reporting about, you know, the Mueller report was finally delivered to the Attorney General. Yeah, I heard about that. I also heard it was a whole bunch of nothing. A nothing burger, as, you know, Van Jones was caught saying on Project Veritas's hidden camera. What in the world is nothing burger? I keep hearing this phrase, and I don't know why people say it. Well, imagine a hamburger, but there's nothing between the buns. So it's a nothing burger. It just I don't know if this I don't do know if that's me. the technical definition, but that's just that's what I'm going with. So just take it. <laughs> but um, I think I think the bullshit. It's, it's just I think it's finally over. Yeah. Right. No. No way. I mean, what are you trying to say? Are you, are you insinuating that the left's just not going to give up? I'm saying that the corporate press is the enemy of humanity. Well, would you like to go into detail? Nope. Do not care at all me neither <laughs> that uh that guy on msnbc uh rachel maddow cried though <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's the new great depression <laughs> but uh hey you know another enemy of humanity failed this week that's right that's right the the, the green new deal that we've talked about what two two or three times or at least in passing at least seven times. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I mean, we're on six episodes, so geez, Lou, we're doing good. Um, but no, I mean, it died uh, spectacularly in the Senate. Oh my God, it so died, <laughs> and I am I'm a hundred percent sure that Sandy from the Bronx is pissed. <laughs> well, uh, she might secretly be pissed, but um, she's pretending that she orchestrated the vote. What are you talking about? Uh, so apparently okay so if you actually look at the vote absolutely no one in the senate voted in favor of the green new deal um so 57 senators voted no just straight up said no and by the way i'm not used to shouting out democrats and you know with same thing with republicans usually they have some sort of ulterior motive that they're working on that we don't see but there were three democrats that said no um, right, you're actually your. Uh, uh, right. I'll, I'll shout these guys out. Your um, one of your senators, Cinema. Uh, uh, yeah, he oh, he wow. voted against it, but the guy who won. I think Cinema's a lady. Oh, is it? Oh, I have no I'm idea. I'm pretty sure Cinema's a lady. We'll go with it. We'll go with he. It's 2019. Who cares? <laughs> he, whatever. Real talk. I Zer. don't know. I don't know about any of these people. Senator uh, Zer voted no. But yeah, so, but uh, Jones in Alabama, Doug Jones, who uh, barely beat a pedophile, 
Um, I don't even think he was really a pedophile. I think that was just a targeted attack. But you know, whatever. Um, he probably he probably is. I, I there's no telling. Um, but uh, yeah, he voted no, and then um, Manchin from West Virginia voted no. Um, but the rest of the Democrats, so all the Republicans, three Democrats, voted no, and the rest of the Democrats voted president instead of voting for the resolution. She had absolutely no backing or even a single yes vote in the Senate. Not even Bernie said yes. So the majority of them vote to, or not vote, excuse me, they abstain from voting. And she's somehow plant, or excuse me, she's somehow taking credit that she orchestrated that whole event. Right. Um, according to um, Miss Cortez, by the way, she hates being called Miss Cortez. I don't know why these people say things on Twitter. But she had a little rant, and she hates being called Miss Cortez. So guess what? Miss Cortez it is. Miss Cortez it is. <laughs> what a weird thing to hate being called. Like, you're, you're not married, and your last name's Cortez. Right. Okay? Apparently, Whatever. you have to say both names, or it doesn't count. Um, uh. <laughs> but uh, so apparently, according to her, she told all of she and some other people told all of these, these uh, Democratic senators to vote present instead of voting for it, and they just complied I'll actually read the I'll read the tweet. Um, Senator uh, John Barrasso, who I've also never heard of before, um, said uh, on Twitter, "Why did Senate Democrats just duck a vote on your Green New Deal?" And she responded, Ooh. "She responded because I encouraged them to vote present along with others." McConnell tried to rush the Green New Deal straight to the floor without a hearing. The real question we should be asking. Why does the Senate GOP refuse to hold any major hearings on climate change? <laughs> because it's stupid, that's why. Hold on. So this guy straight up says, hey, why did the Democrats duck voting on the Green New Deal? And she says, because I told them to, along with right, others. Yeah. Who are the others? No one else voted present. Who are the others? No, no idea. <laughs> Who is she talking about? I guess she's... Uh, she's Whatever. <sighs> she's... Arrogant. She's crazy... Yeah, just totally freaking arrogant. Just wow. Yeah, I mean, I can honestly, I the only thing I can imagine right now is that every representative and senator that's been in office for more than five minutes just hates her guts. Uh, I mean, for coming in and not only trying to change the entire economy in one fell swoop, but like following that up by acting like she controls them all. Yeah, that freshman spunk, that spirit she has, I mean... I know that would piss me off. I don't know why, but there's just something about her that just really gets on my nerves. Is it her horse face? It's not so much that. It's the fact that she's, like, I think she's honestly borderline retarded, <laughs> which I feel bad picking at sometimes, but then again, well, whatever. One thing I found out the other day, because my mom kept tagging me in it, was there was a video, and I don't remember the name of the group, but there was, like, a Democratic think tank that essentially ran auditions to find out who they wanted to run in the House of Representatives. And she won essentially a popularity contest to become the no the nominee. So like the voice? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly. But yeah, I mean, there was like auditions. I wonder if she had to do like a, like a talent. Like if she had to like ask some questions under fire, like in the hot seat. And then like put on a little performance you know what I mean? I have I have no idea. You know, the, the swimsuit competition? You know, how good does she look? <laughs> but, yeah, that would be an interesting... I, I, I'd like to hear more about that. We're going to have to do some Google. I'll try, to, I'll try to find the video. Maybe your mom's just... For you. Maybe your mom's just coming up with some boomer stats. But <laughs> No, she, I actually watched a video where they explained it. Oh, oh, really? Verified. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Hey, we're gonna have to talk about that offline, but, but um, back back on subject here. My understanding is that good old Mitch McConnell, that turtle person, he um, he pushed the vote more or less because he wanted to put a target on anybody that would vote for something so stupid. Yeah. No, I, I heard that too, and according to analysts that's why mo almost all of them voted present um yeah he wanted to make it so that all of the democrats who voted for that measure looked like loons to the people that they would need to convince to vote for them in the next election yeah i mean that seems like a pretty good strategy i mean but so i mean who do you think won 
I feel like you could pretty much call every present vote a yay vote in in reality. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know if this will end up helping um, the left or the right more, but as of this moment, the U.S. is just a little bit safer when it comes to the stupid ideas of Miss Cortez. Miss Cortez. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's racist. <laughs> but uh, so speaking of stupid ideas. Do you know who has a lot of stupid ideas? Hollywood. Hey, did you uh, did did you watch the Oscars this year? Shut it. <laughs> you know, I'd ask you what these morons were up to now, but I'm I'm actually close to this situation, so let's just let's talk about it. All right. Well, here's the scoop. The Georgia State Senate recently passed a bill that would ban abortions once a fetal heartbeat is detected, and it's now heading towards the House. What's do you do you smell that? Do you smell that, Phil? Is, what is it? I, I, I think that, I think that, I think that smell is, uh, is it extortion? I think, I think you're right. I think Alyssa Milano and, and, you know, some other Holly weirdos, you know, being the pillars of morality that they are, you know, they quickly fired back by having, you know, um, their little Writers Guild of America essentially issue an ultimatum to the governor which is kill the bill or production crews, TV shows, etc., may choose to leave the state entirely. What's hilarious, I mean, these bullying tactics used by the left, they just, I mean, they never cease to amaze me. The party of tolerance and understanding, they'll just bully anybody into submission who's not willing to just roll over and take it from them. But um, anyway, I'm interested to hear, you know, as someone who hides from the government somewhere in the state of Georgia, you know, I, I'm curious well, yeah, I mean, without to hear your two cents. Getting too much into it, um, let's just say that the people who make movies in Georgia, um, I see them. You know, they they regularly use products that I sell in their movies. Um, every now and then, someone who works at Marvel uh, will actually, it's kind of cool, will tell me if I'm on the right track when it comes to uh, speculating about in game or whatever new movies coming down the pipeline. Well, that I mean that sounds kind of awesome. But um, do you think if they stop shooting, that would affect your store and like your overall, you know, the bottom line of your store and you know the ability to feed your twenty seven kids? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it it could. Um, but quickly, um, ask me how much I care. No, just tell us. Uh, thank you for asking. I don't care at all. I mean, I can't imagine living in a mindset where you see a law that literally says that babies whose hearts are beating should be protected, and your first thought is to try and, I don't know, destroy the livelihoods of people you don't know in a state that you don't live in. But, I mean, in, in all honesty, in the 2019 Democratic, you know, party, these progressives, do we really expect anything different? No. No, I don't. Um, these people have... They sat on their asses while the last president created terrorist after terrorist by killing a bunch of children. But the second that someone says that boys' bathrooms are for boys and girls' bathrooms are for girls, or that perhaps the most vulnerable of us deserve to be protected, that virtue signal gets switched on and they go for blood. I mean, they, they try to take out the ability of fathers and mothers everywhere or anywhere that they, they decide they disagree with those fathers and mothers they, they, they try to take out their ability to feed their well, family. Well, I mean, that seems like the status quo, bros of Stalin. You know, we have to, speaking from their perspective, we have to destroy right. anybody who doesn't fall in line. And, you know, at, at, if, at, at this point, you know, after seeing what we've seen for the last two years, after everything that they've done, said, continue to do, you know, if they're not propping up death and destruction, I just, I wouldn't know what party we're talking about at this point in time. I'm just glad that we have an intellectual and moral giant like who's the boss's own Alyssa Milano to save us poor Southerners from ourselves. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger really made a mistake by saving her in commando. But, you know, I'm just, you know, honestly, hopefully, you know, the state, you know, Georgia grows a pair and just stands their ground. It would be a nice... Just for once, for these elites to just get a black eye and just get put in their place. And for someone to just finally say, no, we won't comply with your stupid ideas. But just, 
That's all I want is just put them in their place. Just one time. That's all I'm asking for. Right. Uh, speaking of someone trying to put someone in their place, um, Rockland County, New York, uh, recently declared a state of emergency over a measles outbreak. That's right. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you watched the Brady Bunch much, much as a kid, but uh, they had an episode where they had measles and played it up for laughs. So, uh, uh, but yeah, the state of emergency goes as far as uh, barring unvaccinated minors from public spaces. Jeez. You know, New York sure loves its statism. You know, and, and, you know let's just think about it. How, how are they going to enforce this craziness? I mean, maybe it would be, maybe the state can just cut pretense just this one time and just, let's just sew a giant U onto their clothing so that we can easily identify these unvaccinated, you know, degenerates. I mean, at least give them the free tattoos, too. I don't know how they'll actually be able to enforce this. Um, regardless, it's now in effect that anyone under 18 who isn't vaccinated against the measles is banned from public places. Uh, it's supposed to last until the declaration expires in 30 days um, or until these people comply and get vaccinated. Um, and also... Uh, from what I've from what I've read, there are no religious exemptions. Well, that's awesome. Um, you know, I I perused a couple articles, and I guess you know officials you know had to come out and say that you know cops aren't going to be roaming the streets you know asking papers papers please, you know. But if someone is caught, you know, in public unvaccinated, their case is going to go all the way up to the DA's office of all places. But you know, my opinion, my perspective. This seems like a big state-sanctioned scare tactic. And the reason is just a push for vaccine compliance. I mean, I, I've looked up some statistics, and there's about roughly 150 cases of measles in that county, and the population's almost 330,000 people. So we're talking about a fraction of 1%. So please explain to me how this is a state of emergency when we're talking about something that affects less you know a fraction of one percent of the population there's always money in the banana stand um <laughs> I, I you know i also think that this may be some sort of political stunt to push the feds further towards federally mandating vaccines instead of letting parents and doctors make choices for their kids um i mean like you know someone makes money off of vaccines who's pushing it where's the money i haven't dug too deeply but you know, when stuff like this happens, it doesn't exactly add up. Yeah, I mean, there's that always there's that old phrase that always says, you know, follow the money. But you know, you know, va vaccines, I'll give it to them. It's a contentious issue. But can we all just see this for what it is? I mean, it, it, this is a blatant power grab by the government to force compliance with their vaccine agenda. That's it. That's it. I mean. What else? What else could you possibly sum it up as? Is, oh, you want you wanted to travel, you know, in public? Okay, get vaccinated. No big deal. I mean, they went as far away, or excuse me, they went as far as taking away people's freedom of travel. You know, so honestly, what's next? To be fair. To be fair. To, to be, be fair. fair. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before they go for the throat federally. Uh, there's there's too much money in vaccines for senators and representatives to not have someone trying to line their pockets. I mean, let's just hope that people aren't as willing to give their bodies away to the state as they are in Europe. True. I guess, you know, only time will tell, but, you know, we'll find out. We'll see what happens, buddy. But uh, moving on, you know, we, we covered this in a previous episode, and I, I figured we'd give some final thoughts on the topic. Which, uh, which topic did you have in mind? Well... You've most likely heard that Jesse Smollett recently had all 16 felony charges dropped relating to his hoax hate crime. Say what? I know you heard what I said. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of this recent development. But uh, are you aware that he's, he may still face federal charges and civil lawsuits? Duh. We read the same article, dude. <laughs> well, then why don't you get... <laughs> just get to the point already, Ted. All right. Well, according to the article... Link in the show notes. This feller named Andrew Weisberg, a former prosecutor turned defense attorney, said this case stinks. It stinks, I tell ya. Easy there, Nick Cage. We just need the facts. 
all right, buddy Buzzkill, if you if that's how you want to play it, then fine. He didn't say it stinks, but um, what he did say is the case is unusual. And one reason he cited is that Jesse, or Jesse, whatever this <laughs> weirdo's name is. I can't get over that name. Jesse, <laughs> Jesse, I keep saying Jesse, whatever, Jesse, whatever. He was indicted on March 8th. And the charges were dropped on March 26th. That seem that seems pretty quick. It does seem quick. So perhaps there's something to the old, for, you know, fame and fortune, you know, helps you out legally. So maybe that played a little bit of a role here. Or white privilege. Obviously. I mean, that goes without saying. But <laughs> anywho, so I, I, I did a little reading. And there's, a, you know, one of the federal charges he may face is mail fraud, of all things. Now... So 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 check this out. The the FBI is investigating if he sent himself hate mail with a white powder before the fake attack. If convicted, he could face up to 10 years in prison. Now, you know, moving on a little bit past that, Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, he's thinking, I mean, this guy's so mad over this. He's thinking about suing Smollett in an attempt to recoup some of the wasted tax dollars that they spent investigating these shenanigans. I mean, that's that's not a bad course of action. I mean, <clears throat> not dropping the charges, obviously, but pursuing action civilly to kind of recoup some of that money. Um, I don't think jail is the correct answer because this is just a... I mean, it's essentially a, a victimless crime, um, but the taxpayers that paid the city... And the pigs to investigate this deserve some sort of restitution. I mean, I mean, throw a throw a felony next to his name, at least. I mean, at least charge him with one. Right. I think we can agree on that. The only victim here is, I mean, if you want to call them a victim, is the state because they had to waste time and manpower on the investigation. Sure. But let's let, let's. That's more the. I mean, it's the it's the civilians that are. Annie really the dough for I, that, really though. yeah they're the ones being extorted to pay for all this crap but at least stick them with you know falsifying a police report making false statements something of that nature but you know we can certainly agree it's more or less a victim as crime let let them seek some sort of restitution to you know get this all out there's no jail time i mean he's not it's not a, it's not like he went out there and stabbed somebody but you know, you know, we'll have to just keep an eye open on any other lawsuits that may pop up or other investigations, things of that nature. So we'll have to keep our eyes peeled. I mean, yeah, I mean, the one good thing is he's they're they're gonna make him pay his uh, hundred thousand dollar was it the bail? I don't know. He he put in a hundred thousand dollars and they're they're keeping that. So that's something. Yeah. Well, now Daddy's gonna take some time to take the driver's seat for a second because I want to point out something. I find to be especially heinous. I'm going to read a recent Trump tweet. I'm going to give some context. I'm going to give my opinion if it pleases the court. I'll allow it. Thank you, Judge Cam. So I'm going to read a recent tweet <laughs> by Donald J. Trump himself. In honor of his past service to our country, Navy SEAL hashtag Eddie Gallagher will soon be moved to less restricted confinement while he awaits his day in court. Process should move quickly. That came today, March 30th. I'm a little. I'm already a little frustrated. I know you and I both are, but for those who are listening that are unaware, Eddie Gallagher is a SEAL who is currently awaiting, tr uh, excuse me, awaiting trial for charges of war crimes, okay, and premeditated mother <laughs> murder. It's alleged in the reports that I've read that he purposely targeted civilians by shooting them with a sniper rifle. With a <laughs> sniper rifle, yeah, okay. Let me just and and he sh like an they old were lady. Wounded. It said an old he shot lady. To wound a, yeah, there was an elderly lady, and I don't remember the other demographic of the person, but there were civilians that he just shot, allegedly, whatever. And then there was this ISIS fighter that he's again alleged to have stabbed to death, and this is after the ISIS fighter was wounded in battle, and that there was you know corpsmen and or medics or whoever was on the scene at that time. Giving care, stabilizing the fight. Yeah, apparently, um, let me just say, according to what I read, um, sure. he was actually one of the the people who was helping stabilize this guy at first. Yeah, I think I read similar reports. And you know where where it starts to take a, a weird turn from there because you can be like, all right, you were in a gunfight with this guy, and you know you shot him, you went and patched him up, okay, whatever, that's kind of cool. 
whatever. I can get that. But where it takes a weird turn towards, you know, the, the dark here and the macabre is there are alleged pictures that were sent via text message of Gallagher holding the, the guy up after he allegedly stabbed him. In the neck. neck. So holding him up by stabbed his hair. Stabbed him in the neck. Yeah, stabbing him in the neck and then in the body. So, but holding him up by the hair of his head and then having his hand, his knife in one other hand. And that's how he's posing for a picture. And I believe, I believe the kid was a teenager. I want to say maybe 15 or he 16. Was, he was 15 years old. Right. So now, now we, we gave the context, we gave the tweet. Now, just for a little bit of a feedback, am, am I the only person here who thinks it's absolutely f***ing insane to tweet a shout out to this dude? Like, this guy's about to go on trial for potential war crimes and premeditated murder. Let's, let okay, let's just play this out to its conclusion. Let's say he's found guilty. This means that Trump just said we have to honor his record of murder and war crimes. There's, there's... Uh, is that not crazy or is it just me? If you can't lose your heroism when you find a wounded soldier and stab him in the throat and then take pictures with his head... I, I think there's a problem here. I mean, look, and I mean the, the tweet said um, he'll be moved to less restrictive confi- confinement. This dude stabbed a kid in the neck. Right. He he stabbed a kid in the neck. Why does he need less restrictive confinement? I just come on. And why do we need to honor his his? Why do we need to honor his service? I mean, from the articles that I've read, after this alleged incident took place, he held a reenlistment ceremony. So he was like, yeah, let's kill this kid. Hey, check it out. I'm going to hold him up. Picture. Smile. Oh, that's going on Insta. I like that. And then, hey, let me just reenlist and let's have a party real quick. Like, okay, you, you, like, what are you, a psycho? Are you serious? He texted the picture to someone. Yeah. Um, I don't remember because they, they, they took, they took all the names out of it, but he texted the picture to someone and the response from the guy was, hey. Be careful about sending pictures. Let's just give some other context here. If I was, you know, when I was stationed in Yuma or Japan, if I was patrolling around the mean streets of the base and I just all of a sudden arbitrarily shot somebody, I'm going to jail for life. There's no, I'm not getting any tweets about how awesome I am or how funny I was or, you know, my little antics that got everybody, you know, to kind of laugh when things were shitty. I'm not getting any tweets you know, why is this guy getting special tweets from the president? Is it because he's, you know, a Navy SEAL? Or, you know, what do we, what does that say about us as a country or p- politicians in general that we're so beholden to this, you know, cult of personality that the military has that we have to honor people who are sadistic killers? Yeah, and one of the things that, because um, I, I, you know, I've been libertarian and non-interventionist for like just years. I mean, it's... A, at this point, probably a decade or so, maybe more. I'm not really sure. I can't tell you the timeline. That sounds about right. Um, a, about a decade, I'll say. Um, but one of the one of the things that um, really kind of changed the way I... I'm not saying that every person who enters the military is an evil person by any stretch of the imagination. I know some good ones. But one of the things that really showed me the darkness that's in the military and some of the training they have is I knew a kid who, and you're going to, you're going to say it's because it's the army, but uh, (laughs) I knew a kid who was a, it was a pretty good kid and I knew him for years and he goes into the army and like the first time I see him after he gets out of um, his uh, boot camp or whatever, um, he's, he's like, I got this new knife. I can't wait to shove it in some random towel heads brain. I was like, ew, what? Just anyone. It doesn't matter who it is, as long as they're Arab. Like what he, and then what really threw me. And I don't know if I've told you this story before, Phil, but this really this made me end my friendship with him. Um, he said that he was enlisted, and I'm sure you know something about this. Maybe so a little bit. Um, he he said he was in uh, not enlisted. He was deployed to I want to say Afghanistan, and he would drive one of the Humvees. And apparently, when you're driving one of the Humvees, one of the rules when you're there is that you can't just stop or slow down because, you know, someone might throw an IED or something like that, right? I don't know the real rules. I wasn't in the military. But he he tells me this, and he was like, and you know, God, I have the funniest story for you. I was like, okay. And he goes, uh, so yeah, we weren't supposed to stop or slow down. 
Um, <laughs> and one time, this kid ran across the road, and I hit him with my Humvee, laughing. Jesus I, I Christ. Don't, I don't, I don't understand. Aside from mental illness, is there anything you can, t- <laughs> you can tell me that makes me feel any better about how they train people in the military? I was, you know, I was never deployed or put in those particular situations. But, you know, you go through training and you go through workups and you go through, you know, certain scenarios and... You know, you're you're very much taught. I mean, there's a certain level desensitization. Uh, there, I get you. There's desensitization. Yeah, you become desensitized to it to a certain extent because you're taught us versus them. We're the good guys. They're the bad guys. We're human. They're not human. You know, we have all this on our side. We have this righteous cause. They're they're bad people who, you know, they're such cowards, they don't even put a uniform on and, and fight you in the field. They hide among the crowds, and they plant bombs in the road, and they blow people up. They use civilians as bombs. You know, which is, you know, there's some truth to that. Sure. But... I'm sure there is. But, you know, I think there's just a greater thing, you know, that just takes over. You know, it's just tribalism. It's us versus them. You know, we're the good guys. They're the bad guys. We're human. They're inhuman because we have a righteous cause. They don't. So that strips away their humanity. So what we do doesn't necessarily matter because they deserve it. And, you know, there's a couple of great things out there that you could watch. Like um, there's a show called Generation Kill on HBO you could watch. Or you could read the book. The book's much better than the TV show, I I have to admit. Um, The book's great. It's about the initial invasion of Iraq with uh, Marine Recon. It's absolutely just the insight that the Rolling Stone reporter got who was embedded with them was fantastic. There's, you know, a controversial documentary that's going on right now about Marines that were deployed and, you know, talking about like their their inhumanity, their drug abuse, um, things that they would do of that nature. There's a lot of in, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can get that's kind of, you know, of an inside, you know, scoop onto what really goes on. That, you know, gives a good perspective that kind of, you know, maybe open your eyes to, you know, what really is going on. Right. I think I think what it really taught me in that moment and with a couple of other moments with people who joined the military and didn't get better like everyone said they would um, is that they sh- the the U.S. government tried and succeeded in attempting to um, strip the humanity of the enemy. And when they did that, with so many men that I've met, and some of them have turned around and they're great now, and they see where they where they were and where they were wrong. But in the, by doing that, they, they strip the humanity of the men themselves. That, that makes me really sad. There's that old saying, you know, that's, you know, to... What is it? To fight a monster, you have to become a monster. To defeat a monster, you have to become a monster. Something like that. You know, I think that's what happens in a lot of cases. You know, speaking anecdotally, you know, a lot of people that I know personally, you know, have, you know, had conflicts, you know, of that, of not only the the mind, but of the soul. You know, it weighs on them now, years after. And, you know, they're filled with regret. Man is just not not designed to kill man maliciously absolutely not i mean you know there's a difference between some dude breaking into your house looking to steal your tv to sell it for drugs and and you know he pulls a knife or a gun on you and you shoot him in self-defense yeah or if someone if some if some piece of crap decides to touch your kids i mean right. that's a that i feel like i mean that, that's the that's different there's a difference between that and being dropped in someone's village and just bombing it telling you to shoot them or shooting them because they looked weird or you thought maybe they were grabbing a gun or they had something to do with some terrorist activity in the area and you just waste them or you just bomb the entire village like there's there's a difference and and, you know one has to weigh more heavily than the other on somebody you know like like you know you see all these studies in the articles that come out about those you know the drone pilots that you know have all this ptsd and don't sleep and have all these problems because they're just flying around these drones and blowing up villages and killing civilians and it's just like well i mean yeah that kind of makes sense i mean what else do you expect to happen when you're just going around murdering people indiscriminately it's like playing a video game and knowing that every person you shoot actually dies right it's like call of duty but for real our brains are just not set up 
to do that, man. Yeah, but... Um, but yeah, okay, so let's get away from that, because <laughs> we went to the deep darkness again. Um, darkness. <laughs> and like I said, I, I'm not trying to demean anyone who uh, joined the military because, you know, they wanted to be... They've been told their whole lives that they're there to protect freedom or that they're there, um, you know, to be a hero. Um, I think they were lied to and sold a bill, a bill yeah. of goods, but... I don't think that they're necessarily. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't lump people. everybody in. Generalizations are easy to 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 make, but you know when we consider right, that because I wouldn't put you into that. Well, let's also let's just take it aside from me. You know who was one of Ron Paul's largest support bases? The military. So there's there's a, not to mention that he joined the air force. He was in the exactly. Air force. There's a there's a lot to be said for the fact that yeah, there's a lot of guys and gals right now who are like, yeah, don't send me over there. <laughs> that that doesn't make sense. Why? That has nothing to do with defending our country. There are a lot of people there right now. There, I mean, so it, like I said, it's easy to make generalizations, but. You know, it, it, I think it, it's more fair to, as these cases pop up, to call them out as we see them. Like, this guy, from all intents and purposes, it seems like is just a sadistic killer. Just like that guy I knew. Yeah, so just call a spade a spade. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, looks like a duck, it's probably a duck. That's, that doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. I, and I think it's yeah. fair to make that distinction. I, you know, I agree. Um, but it's, it's, it's that time. It's that time. It's buddy. time to uh, get us get us out of that 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 uh, darkness for a second, and uh, you know. So um, we actually asked our our loyal listeners in our secret Facebook group to send over some questions um, that they'd like us to answer this episode. You know, you know, we did, and we we sure did get a lot of responses. And they sucked. Um, so we threw those out, and um, I've written some questions <laughs> for you, Phil, and uh, I trust that you've done the same for me. Oh, that's Texas size ten four, buddy. I got some questions. <laughs> All right, let's 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 get started, and it, let, let's you know, let's go back and forth. Um, so I'll start. All right, you go first, buddy. What is your favorite thing about me? Oh, <laughs> you son of a! <laughs> <laughs> In all honesty, I think it's your ability to make me crack up laughing more than probably most people that I can <laughs> that I can name. You 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 crack me up, and you always make me laugh, and that's hey, that's definitely that's... something I appreciate. So that's a high compliment for me because you know that's like how i was I don't, I don't know how it happened because my parents i mean my mom can be kind of funny but like we're not we're not like people who care about comedy or like mm-hmm. they weren't but it's like me and my brother was like comedy our whole lives <laughs> yeah i'm always trying to make people laugh because i'm just usually in a bad mood and i just feel like jokes are you know kind of break up the situations right but. and i'm chunky and i had to find a girl yeah so you need a personality <laughs> but i started laughing so hard when you asked me this question because my question to you is literally a question that i i typed up wanting to ask you is what's your favorite thing about me <laughs> honestly honestly no. I swear to God, that's that's. I typed out five questions, and question five is, "What's your favorite thing about me?" Um, uh, yeah, no, it's it's funny because like we've been friends for what three or four years now, and you know I've always yeah. liked your sense of humor and your just ability to like go with me when I when I start going into like a tear and like screwing with people or making jokes or whatever. You just go with it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, but honestly, like after starting this podcast thing like your you know your dedication to it has been so good for me because i i'm an idea guy and if i don't have someone who's working towards the same goal i don't get anything done so that's that's been huge and i i hugely appreciate that well that's a way better answer than mine you you <laughs> that makes you sound <laughs> That makes you sound like a way better person. Uh, no, I'm not. Mine was like, oh, I like how you make me laugh. Her, 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 her. <laughs> and uh, here you are with this with this groundbreaking movement. We just move forward on so many emotional levels. <laughs> Whatever. All right. My, Your question. My next question. My next, next question. question. Is, um, if you woke up as me, what would be the first thing that you would do? <laughs> oh, man. That's, uh, my questions are very self-centered. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. If I woke up as you, 
what was the first thing that I would do? Yes, sir. I'd probably literally say, where did all these kids come from? <laughs> that's 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 yeah i mean most people would (laughs) all right my question ready Mm -hmm. what does your beard smell like (laughs) used to it always smelled like pine um that was my that was my jam um i haven't I'll, i'll still use that oil every now and then but honestly i turned 30 and suddenly i have dry skin under my beard so (laughs) most of the time it just smells like face (laughs) just smells like psoriasis (laughs) it just it just you know whatever i smell like that's what it smells like but uh after i get some grandpa's pine tar soap again and some more uh beard oil it's gonna go back to pine that sounds like a great product grandpa's pine tar soap. it's incredible because it smells like a dang um campfire like you shower and it smells like a campfire. It's, I, ooh, love it. All right, so uh, my follow-up question, real talk. Um, nice. Are you really je- jealous of my beard? <laughs> I'd prefer not to answer this on air. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Do you not see this on the webcam? Do you not see how orange and patchy this is? Do you not think I'm humiliated every day I look in the mirror and I see this? Uh <laughs> all right my turn all right all right we're gonna get right. serious we're gonna get serious all right buckle up partner it's about to get bumpy why are none of your freaking kids named after me for the same reason that they're not named after ron paul or william wallace i just didn't like the name that much <laughs> i like the people better than i like their names oh shh. <laughs> You know, I mean, all right. I can't believe you. Much. My <laughs> I don't think sucks. your name is bad. It's just like, you know, like, like, like I said, like there are people that I love. It, no, you know how I know it's bad. People, okay, so okay, someone says Phil, they immediately think of Doctor Phil. <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> oh, Phil, like Doctor Phil. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I never existed prior to his medical career yeah i mean fake i think isn't it fake medical career or something i don't know yeah his oprah winfrey career whatever you're all right you ready for another self-centered question of course Uh, what is the best joke that i've ever told or best uh comment the one that really had me rolling more than i think anything you've ever said is from that first podcast episode where you said we were finally getting them back for 9-11 when we were when we were talking about the hoaxes and the guy was like i'll set you on fire and what's funny is i i I wrote i I wrote that joke i i i I thought about that in advance and i wrote it down and i was like i deleted it and i remember (laughs) <laughs> you, I don't know if you texted me or what, but you were like, put it back, put it back. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I, I literally texted you and I said, put it back. Do you know how I know this is a great joke? Is because I, I told it to my wife and she looked at me like I was sick. <laughs> like, that's how I know it's a great joke. And she literally, she literally said to me, what's funny about that? <laughs> I said, I, I, I had tears in my face and I said everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, next question next question to you all right what are your thoughts on people who put ice cubes in their milk my son does this which one ezra my oldest and i'm pretty sure your oldest okay so he's like four yeah, and so i'm pretty sure right. um that means so he doesn't know any better that he is probably a sociopath um or something he might yeah. kill some yeah, some most, animals most in the likely. future i'm not really sure but it's not a good sign it's yeah. like the people who get their french fries it's not your fault and then they they put the ketchup onto the fries instead of on the side to dip them yeah you don't oh sh- well i do that with <laughs> never mind <laughs> moving on hey hey move on move on next question ask me all hurry, right here's, hurry. here's, here's my, 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 my my forget this ever happened all right here's my final question um Am I your best friend yet? If not, what do I have to do? (laughs) (laughs) You you might be number two at this moment. And that's just solely because 
we've we haven't been in person and you haven't bought me a drink that's that's how low my bar is we got to hang out and you just buy me a drink and we'll be good but yeah so that's my last question you got anything any another one i do i have one more question all right go for it if you could kiss ron paul would you kiss him on the lips or on the cheek? Be honest. Don't f*** with me. Don't f*** with me. Be honest. If I could or if I had to. No. No. It, this is not an obligation. This is simply like you have the opportunity. It presents itself. What do you do? Well, I mean, obviously on the cheek. But, like, I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm not one to right. kiss dudes. Well, do you love liberty or do you hate it? Do you want to... Do you want to thank him for all that he's done? I mean, a proper smooch right on the lips really, really seals that. Did you ever see that um, the clip from Bruno, where um, Sasha Baron Cohen was in the hotel doing a an interview with Ron Paul? I'll be honest with you, partner. I stopped watching Bruno four minutes in. I didn't watch the movie. It freaked me out, and I had to stop. I didn't watch the movie. I just saw this clip. And dude, like, started taking off his pants and stuff and dancing around Ron Paul and trying to come on to him. And Ron Paul was like, he was not having it. <laughs> and it was one of those things where, like, Ron Paul, has, it was funny, but I, I felt so bad for him in that moment. Because he's like, he walks out of the room and he's like, this guy's trying to do, trying to do queer stuff to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that poor guy. He's probably like, what is going on here? Oh, uh, yeah, that dude's a freak. Sasha Baron. That dude, that dude's got so many problems. <laughs> I can only imagine. All right. <laughs> All right, folks. You know, thanks for having, you know, I won't say a bit. I'll say a lot of fun with us today and joining us on, you know, our adventure into the madness of our world. Right. You can, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. Just type in "This is MLGA." Um, if you'd like to send us an email, type "This is MLGA" again and throw at gmail.com on it until we get our new spiffy emails. You know, hit us up, subscribe, make sure to rate us and leave us a review on iTunes. You know, it, it helps us grow and guarantees new episodes. We're really making a big push to try to get on that new and uh, noteworthy section of iTunes. So help us out. Uh, we'd also like to shout out Ryan Burgett. Kim Shang and Thaddeus Presson from the new MLGA original show. Thank you for your servers. That's right. Our good friends have started a brand new show, the second original show created from the MLGA network. I hope you like nerdy stuff. Definitely. And as we mentioned in the interview with Ryan, their show will cover technology and technology news from a libertarian perspective. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear the finished product. Um, I was able to sit in as they recorded their first episode, and uh, since I was interested in the vast majority of it, I think that's a good sign since I'm not, I've never listened to Twit or what other, whatever other internet tech shows there were. I, I just know you guys are going to love it. Definitely. And uh, that should be dropping by Wednesday. So just keep an eye out for that. Search, you know, for thank you for your servers or wherever you listen to our, uh, your podcasts at. Uh, yeah, and don't forget to check out the MLGA Network. We are a small and scrappy group of libertarians that share all of the best liberty podcasts on MLGANetwork.com. Uh, make sure to check that out. And uh, besides thank you for your servers, we're going to have even more original shows coming your way very soon. All right, as always, guys and gals. You know, we're happy to be here and we're happy you're with us. Stay sane.